Hola. Representing the Hurtado last name. <laughs> Spanish. Her Hurtado. Yes. Okay. Do you know what like the like meaning of that last name is? It means the thief of hearts. Because we're such great musicians that you will lose your mind and your heart. Are you being serious right now? <laughs> I'm just making that up as I go. Oh. <laughs> <That's very crazy. laughs> Are you serious right now? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, we know that I'm not that good of a musician. Well, you you definitely have musical. I do. Background. I do. Sheree and I were just having a discussion, and I said, "Let's share that because it's a good discussion." Yeah. We're. Now I'll bring it to speed and Sheree will take over where she was real quickly you'll see that my last video about tithing it's very popular because it's a real thing and I believe God has anointed that video he wants his people to know how to prosper and in that regard there's more to it because there's the the 10 10 10 principle that we've been using from the book the richest man of Babylon 10% to God 10% to your storehouse 10% to invest and living on the 70% so you can carry on with where you were and we'll pick up from there. So I had just brought up about how I'm very, very proud of my son because since he started, I started teaching him this, mm, maybe about a year, but especially once he started working two jobs, he very much every paycheck before he spends a dollar out of it, he 10, 10, 10. 10% spiritual nourishment. He saves 10%. He hasn't quite like invested in anything yet because he's just, you know, he's still kind of yep. young, but he has it set aside. And we were having a discussion a few days ago about, you know, he has X amount of dollars here, X amount of dollars there. And then he gives his 10% back to God every time he gets paid. And with some of the things that he wants to start doing, he's very big into technology. And, um, I feel like he's starting to see little things starting to happen as far as um, where he's learning from, different people, different, uh, I don't know, like the terminology and stuff as far as technology goes, but just um, different communities. Not, yeah, just communities, I guess. And, um, being offered even more jobs and being able to create more income and all these things that are be adding unto his life because of just using those that one principle and being true to it and it, it is it's marvelous and I'm so proud because not only and I told him too you may not realize it right away but this is for your life like the more you do this, the more you will see it create an abundance and flow and seeing your storehouse be filled and just what God will really do in your life. Like, because it's, if you just follow this one principle, he will bless you in so many more ways than you can even believe. And if you can learn to live on 70% of your money, you know, God will always give you a hundred. Yep. I would rather... This is the one that I say a lot. I would rather 70% of my money be blessed than 100% of it be cursed. Yeah, exactly. That's wonderful. Your son is beginning a great process, and I know because I taught my son in 2000, and I think he's been doing it since 2014, 15, somewhere in there. He's been doing it ever since he was basically gathering his first dollars here and there. I taught him about it. And tremendous, tremendous progress. It, you know, he's got, he has a wonderful job. He loves his job. He gets paid very well. He tithes to this day still. And I've seen it work in my life for over two decades of doing it. We don't know God's ways. We're not supposed to. We just know what God says for us to do. And then he provides in ways that he has already ordained for us. And that's following Christ. That's being obedient to the Word. And that's all He asks for. You don't have to be the smartest person in the world. In fact, that can be your detriment. Yep. Because you think you're smarter than the, than the Word of God. But if you're not 
basing it on your talents and abilities, it's even better because God can increase you in all of those things. You know, we humble ourselves, he exalts us. Yes, he increases the intellectual knowledge as needed. He'll give it to you. He'll literally make you a genius in your profession if it's meant to be. He'll exalt you for your humility because you reflect divine intelligence. There's only one intelligence, one mind, one consciousness. And when we submit ourselves to the divine plan, that's something we can even call upon. Once we tithe, we can call upon the divine plan for our life because we have legal authority to claim it. Because, like you said, 70% is now blessed. In fact, all of it's blessed. Right. It's it's always there. Yep. And everything that I have is because of God. So why would I not just return what has been given to me already? Yes. It's that simple. It, it really is. When you understand that everything belongs to God and that His portion is for His purposes, that's all you really need to submit to. Like, hey, I don't know what God's going to do with this money. In fact, I don't care because He'll do it. It's not my it's responsibility. It's not my responsibility. And my, you know, my only responsibility yep. is to give my first and best yep. back to Him. That's it. Yep. And you don't worry about anything else. You don't worry about anything else. <laughs> now, before you do that, though, before you make a tithe, you should understand that it's a celebration. It's honor sewing up and favor coming down. So it's your opportunity to get uplifted in thought. What I like to do is I like to go back and watch some of my favorite videos where my faith is filled on tithing. I like to open up the Word and read the promises of God and listen. And I like to remind myself that this is always true, never changes, and it's my lifeline to permanent prosperity. And then when I feel ready, I sow the tithe with gladness, and I never, 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 never take two thoughts again about what they're going to do with it or where it goes from there, because it doesn't matter. You've done your part. It's up to God now to direct and to do His will. Trust me, if you're sowing somewhere and God doesn't like what they're doing with the money, He'll correct them. God does what God does. We don't need to worry about it. I've heard people get all mad. Oh, that preacher's got a jet. He's got this. Does it matter to you? Why? God maybe wants him to fly around and travel and praise God in front of everybody in the room, right? What do you What do you have to say about it? What do you care for? God's going to prosper you in God's own unique way. What does it matter to you? You should celebrate when someone else is prospering. You should be happy because you would want them to be happy when you're prospering. There's no limit. That's the thing is we think that it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, what do you call it? A zero sum game. If, if I give that person 200, they're 200 richer and I'm 200 poor. That's not God's economic system. No. You're both richer because of the fact that you're both adhering to God's principles. That's all there is to it. And that's, that's all I got to say about it. It's really simple. Yeah. It's a hard thing. You really have to love the fact that you are given that opportunity to place yourself into that advantage of having God direct and govern your financial affairs, including your whole life. If we didn't have that opportunity, we'd be left alone to our own bidding. And that's a tremendously scary place because I never made it without tithing, ever. Yeah. Never. Now I've let the fear of lack go. And it's oh. not that I've... I like that because guess what? How long has it been for you since you've been tithing? At least a solid year. It it's took, probably been a little bit... It took me between three and five years to get to that point. But here's... I never understood what tithing exactly was. Like, I would frequently give, you know, just because that's what I thought I was supposed to do, you know, like, as a Christian. But then, when I started to understand the principle of it, was like, oh... Okay, 
and that's no different than having a grateful heart in in my eyes so when I put two and two together you know like you know I've come from like an addiction and dang near being homeless you know but when I gave that back to God where I was just like God I can't do it like I can't do it you gotta help me here he showed me and so then the same went for tithing but I had to let go of the fear of lack just like I had to let go of the fear of not having control of my life with drugs and alcohol I see so I had to let go of it was that. a control thing it was it definitely was a control so when you think that you're controlling your money like you have to let that go see mine was a different scenario but unlike you I, I wasn't able to completely resolve my fear within one year but the irony is that within three years I had already broken past six and seven figure mark in my calling which was I was doing marketing and sales at the time God was ultimately leading me into ministry but I went through a marketing and sales phase which I still love to this day but he prospered the work of my hands but I was still afraid for safety I was afraid of safety and that's another promise of God and he only he'll remove it though but it took a few years for me to finally feel safe and the reason why is I had the sting of going through the Lyme disease and not having money and I felt very unsafe because I realized how vulnerable my son was and even I was at the time thinking I can't even take care of this kid like I am not well I don't have any money I was deathly afraid and it was for safety but it, it did take two and two for me to put together because it was it was a principal thing so it and it was just no different for me letting go of the fear with like drugs and alcohol where the money aspect once I read the richest man of Babylon it was like okay it's it it literally is no different just with a, a another material part of this world yeah it just didn't come in drugs and alcohol it was just money so in conclusion we'll wrap the video up so it's not too long yeah your overall take on it one year in what have you gained from being one year into tithing discipline okay and just his promise it i don't think twice about making my tithe with any increase that i get that first 10 percent right away the most right. important thing i heard you say in my perspective because i've done it for over two decades is you said fear was gone yes the fear you can't you can't do that on your own human will no that's something god has to give you by proving himself mm -hmm. so therefore what he says prove me now in the scripture in malachi 3 10 he had to have proven himself for that fear to leave i think the first The first time that something like major happened, I let it go because I was like, I don't know how I'm going to end up paying for this or figuring, you know, I didn't want to drain my bank account and just the amount of time I would have had to take off and I just let it go. I wasn't going to worry about it. If it was meant to be, it would be. And the next day, everything was taken care of for me. And so... It was just like, okay, that had to have been an act of God because there's no way the million thoughts that I was thinking, like, well, how am I even going to manage to do this? Like, yeah. there's just no financial way that I can. And according to your understanding. Yeah, according. To, I didn't even know where I was going to start. Yeah. And so by that right there was like the big major moment. I was like, there's no way that would have happened unless... I proved him that I could be obedient to that promise. Now you guys below, share your story of how you've proven God through the tithe, because I know you've done it. And then we'll see you on the next video. Much love.